Welcome to Hoboken Grace. If I haven't had the chance to meet you, my name's Chris. I'm lead pastor here at Hoboken Grace. And today is a special day for us because today is our State of the Union uh, where we get to talk about our family, not our nation. That, that's a different conversation, but we get to talk about the incredible union that we have as a family. And we get to look back at what's happened in the past year and then look forward to the future. Now, for those of you who are exploring this Jesus thing and what this is about, I want, you to, I want you to know, we think that you're part of this. As a matter of fact, we think it doesn't matter where you've been, what you've done. It doesn't matter where you've, what decisions you've made, that, that God's pursuing you. He wants for you to be part of this family as well. And so as we talk to this, I want you to know that you're part of this story with us. As we get started, I want to share a little bit of what's happened. It's been a crazy year, hasn't it? I mean, can you imagine that last year at this time we were about to walk into our conversation of what on earth am I here for, our purpose series? Do you, do you even remember that? It seems like years ago, doesn't it? And it's, it's incredible to see all that's happened over the course of this last year. And God's done some remarkable things. As we look back over the, over the course of the past year, we've had over 500 people engage with us here at Hoboken Grace for the very first time. Even since we've been online only, we've had over 85 people who've engaged with us for the first time. And that's just those who've checked in to let us know that they're watching. For a lot of you, you've begun to engage with us recently and we still don't know. We would love, we would love to be able to connect with you. That's why we ask people to check in every single week. But it's, it's been incredible to see all those who've engaged for the first time, we've had over 900 people inside of dinner groups. That's over 900 people experiencing and engaging in community. That's, that's amazing. We, we've seen over 550 serve in some capacity here at Hoboken Grace. That's, that's incredible to see people stepping out, many, many for, the, for the first time, using their gifts as part of this mission. We've seen, we've seen over 200 people begin to give for the first time to say, no, no, I'm bought in. I'm bought into this mission. And, and I, want, I want to honor God with my time, my talents, and my treasures. It's, it's incredible. It just since, since we've been online only, we've had almost 100 people begin to give for the very first time. And a huge part of that is our home initiative and, and how we don't want to just find our home in Him. We want to create home for others. It's been incredible to see how it's, how it's happened. We have over 300 people who are subscribed to our Rhythms notifications. And, and every day, they're joining with us to, to set aside three times a day to experience God in, in a more consistent and powerful way. That's, that's unbelievable. And then, and then listen to this. Listen to this. We have almost 1,800 people every week who are engaging with us online. That's, that's unique viewers that are engaging with us throughout the week. It's unbelievable. That, that doesn't even include the thousands who, who, are, who are listening to the, to the Sunday podcast. It's been amazing to see what God has done to see how even in the midst of this, our family has continued to grow and people are, are taking steps in their journey with God that, that they've never taken before. For some of you, the, the reality is, is that the past, few, the past few months have been incredible, have been incredible months of growth. It's, it's amazing to see. And as we look back, the reality is, is that we have a lot to celebrate. As a matter of fact, I want, to, I want to pause for just a second because I want to recognize the one who's made all of this possible. Will, will, will you pray with me? Father, we are so incredibly grateful for what you've done. And as, as we look at these, at these numbers, which each and every one of them represents a person, a person that you care about, a person that, that your son gave his life for. And Father, we, we are so grateful for what you have made possible. And we celebrate more than anything else today. We celebrate you. In Jesus' name, amen. In, in so many ways, it has been an amazing year. And we've learned so much. And we've tried so many different things. And some of them have worked really well. And some of them, well, they, they haven't. 
And we've had to change course, but through all of it, God has been so incredibly faithful. And yet, at the same time, as we talked about last week, this, this year has also been very hard. In a lot of ways, it's, it's been a difficult year. Someone asked me the other day, they said, how would you capture this, this moment in your life? And I said, I said, in a very real way, I'm mourning because a lot of what, a lot of what was isn't anymore. And even when you look at, at how we experience church, a lot of what was isn't anymore. And we're, we're not able to gather in that way. We're not able to experience each other that way. And as we talked about last week, it's okay to mourn. I, I think it's actually necessary to mourn. And, and as, we, as we said, right now we're in the middle of a storm. And, and that storm... That storm will end. Listen to me. I I said it last week. I'm going to try to say it every week as we move forward. That storm will end. But the reality is is that it's, it is, it's, it's a storm. And, and even though, even though we know it will end, we still have to figure out what we're going to do in the meantime. We, We have to figure out what we're going to do now. And there are a lot of ways that we can, that we can experience this storm. But one, last week we talked about how important it is that we experience it with our dad, that, that we run to him in the midst of it, that we experience the most valuable thing in the midst of it, which is him. But then also, as we move through it, we, there are a lot of different perspectives that we can take on the storm, if you will. We, we could come into it and just say, well, you know what? We're, we're just going to ride this out. And we'll, we'll wait till it's over and then we'll figure out what we're going to do from there. Or, or we could come into it and complain about what, about what we can't do or what we're not able to do or what we used to be able to do. And we, could, we could just submit to the storm and just say, hey, it, it is what it is. But, but here's the thing. Jesus taught us that that's not who we are. I love love the way that the writer of Hebrews captures it as he's calling us to a life of faith. Listen to what he says. He says, but we are not of those who shrink back and are destroyed, but of those who believe and are saved. I, I, I love this verse. I come back to it over and over again because I love the picture here. He's saying, no, no, we're not the ones who live in fear because what do we know? Even in the midst of the storm, we know the one who's leading us forward. He says, no, no, we're not, we're, we're not of those who shrink back in fear. Instead, we're the ones who've experienced that salvation. The, the ones who, through faith, have experienced that salvation. And we know who has saved us. We know, we know who leads us forward. And so he says, we're not, we're not those who shrink back, but, but rather we are those who lean in. Who lean in. And as, as we move through this, as we move through this storm, we get to choose, okay, what will we do? The storm will come to an end, but, but in the meantime, what will we do? I, I want to share with you the story of, of another time when the church experienced a storm. It was actually, it was actually very early in the church's history. As you read through the book of Acts, which is, is the history of, of the beginning of the church, the, the writer Luke is sharing with us this story. And, and early on, as the church is just getting momentum, as it's taking off, thousands have come to know who Jesus is. And this thing is growing like crazy. Early on, there's a storm. And it's big. Now, at the very beginning of the church, the leaders had been persecuted, and, and the apostles were experiencing that persecution. But then, as, as you get a little bit into the story, something happens. I, I, I want to take you, take you there. It's found in Acts chapter 8. It starts off, and it says this, And Saul was there. Now Saul, this individual Saul, is going to eventually become Paul, the one who takes the message of Jesus to like, literally the entire Roman Empire. 
It says Saul was there giving approval to this death because this death, what it's talking about here is the fact that Stephen, one of the early leaders in the church, had just been put to death. He was, he was the first martyr inside the church, the first to be killed because of his faith in Jesus. And, and it says Saul was there giving appro- approval to this death. On that day, a great persecution broke out against the church at Jerusalem. So before this, there had been persecution as it pertained to the apostles and and, and the leaders inside the church. But then all of a sudden, this thing breaks loose. And as Stephen is put to death, this persecution begins to sweep through Jerusalem. Listen to how it continues. It says, On that day a great persecution broke out against the church at Jerusalem, and all except the apostles were scattered throughout Judea and Samaria. Godly men buried Stephen and mourned deeply for for him. But Saul began to destroy the church. Going from house to house, he dragged off men and women and put them in prison. And all of a sudden, what what was a little bit of persecution becomes this mass persecution where where this individual, Saul, who eventually becomes Paul, is literally going into homes. And and if they discovered that you were a follower of Jesus, you were going to be thrown into prison, or even worse, you were going to be put to death. And so the believers are scattered. And they're literally fleeing for their lives. You want to... You want to talk about a storm? That was a storm. And all of a sudden, everything, everything that they had ever known, a lot of the people that they, that they knew were gone. And the church is scattered. I want, I want for you just for a second, to think about what that would have been like. Think about what, what it would have been like to be part of that church as it's growing and thousands are coming to know Jesus and all of a sudden, everything you knew about church, everything you really knew about life was, was gone because you woke up one day and all of a sudden, you're terrified. And your faith in Jesus might actually cost you your life. And you had family members betraying family members. What would that, what would that have been like? And, and, and again, even in, in how they experienced church, there was no more gathering in the temple courts. Everything that they'd experienced of church up to that point as is gone. I, I, have to, I have to think that there were many who that there were many who thought, oh, this is this is it. I mean the, that church thing it kind of took off, but but this is this is it. I, I have to think that those who were persecuting the church thought that. Like we've killed this thing. We're we're going to be able to destroy it. I mean, look at how they're scattered now. They can't come together the way that they used to be able to come together. We're going to be able to kill this thing. I have to imagine that there were many who asked the question, why? I mean, why? When, when this thing is gaining momentum, why? God, it doesn't even seem like you're for it. Why would you let this happen? Imagine what it was like for them. But, but that's not where the story ends. As a matter of fact, as Luke continues, listen, listen to what he says. Verse 4. Those who had been scattered preached the word wherever they went. What they didn't know as they were in the midst of this storm was that even though this was intended for evil, God was going to use this for something incredibly good. And in this moment, he was laying the foundation for something powerful that was going to take the message of Jesus to the world. It's, 
It's incredible. And as you continue to read through Acts, you see that this message of Jesus gets taken to all these different groups of people. As a matter of fact, just a little ways after this, you hear the story of how the message is shared with an Ethiopian eunuch who ends up taking it back to Ethiopia and the church explodes there. It's unbelievable what God was doing in this moment. Because as they were scattered, even though everything that they knew before and that they'd experienced before, everything they knew about church, even though all of that had been taken, all of that had been taken, they decided to lean in. They decided, even though though we're running for, for our lives, even though we're in the midst of this storm, we are not those who shrink back, but no, no, we are those who lean in. And they didn't know what it was going to look like. They didn't. In the same way that for us, as we move through this, we don't know what it's going to look like. But you know what they knew? They knew that they'd experienced the love and grace of Jesus. They knew that they'd experienced that. And for those of you who are exploring this, I want you to know what drives us in this. It's not about an organization. It's about the reality that we've experienced the love and grace of Jesus. It's what, it's what motivates us worked so hard to help people find their way back to God. They knew that they'd experienced that. They knew that they'd been given the greatest message the world had ever heard. And they knew that they'd been sent to take that to anyone and everyone that they contacted. Anyone in their path. And so rather than shrinking back, even as they were running for their lives, they leaned in. And because of that, they got to experience, they got to experience what Jesus had actually promised Peter early on as he was raising up his disciples. L- listen, to what, listen to what Jesus says to Peter in Matthew chapter 16. It says this, it says, Jesus replied, blessed are you, Simon, son of Jonah, for this was not revealed to you by man. He's talking about the fact that Peter had just proclaimed that Jesus was the Messiah. Jesus is like, you didn't know that by yourself. The Father has revealed that to you. He says, but by my Father in heaven. And I tell you that you are Peter, and on this rock I will build my church. And then listen to what he says. And the gates of Hades will not overcome it. He says, Peter, I want you to, I want you to understand something. It doesn't matter what the storm is. It doesn't matter what storm comes. Nothing is going to overcome what it is that I'm doing. And nothing is going to overcome my family and what I'm going to do in and through them. And in this moment, even as they're running for their lives, they lean in, and because of that, this early church experiences this. And those who were persecuting them thought, we've got them, we're gonna destroy this thing. But they didn't know, they didn't know what we know, and that is, our God does unbelievable things even in the midst of storms. Sometimes, the most unbelievable things, even in the midst of storms. And it doesn't matter if hell itself comes against it. It will not overcome it. They chose in the midst of the storm to lean in. As we move through the storm, we get to choose. We get to choose. Will we shrink back or will we lean in? We are not of those who shrink back. No, no, no. That's not who we are. We are those who lean in. And as we move into, as we move into this fall, we believe God is calling us to do just that. To not ask the question, why, God, why is this happening? But to ask the question, how? God, how are you moving through this? How do you want to use us in the midst of this? to leave behind the question of why and to ask the question, how? For the past couple months, we've been asking this question, okay, God, how do you want to use us? And as we look towards the fall, we've got some really exciting things that we're gonna be launching as we move into the next few months. 
And we look at, okay, how can God use us in the midst of the storm? The first thing that we're doing is that we're launching groups all over the world. We don't care where you are in the world. We want for you to start a, a, a dinner group. We want for you to be able to bring people together in community, engage them in this conversation of who Jesus is is. As the church was scattered, they took that message to all these different pockets. And the reality is, as we're in the midst of the storm, in a lot of ways, we've been scattered. This is our chance to be able to take that message of Jesus into all these different places, in all these different pockets. And we want to invite you to be part of launching that with us. We want to start dinner groups all over the world. Because we know what? We know that we've experienced that love and grace. We know that we've been given the greatest message the world has ever heard. And we know that we've been sent to take it to the world. We want to launch groups all over the world. In addition to that, we're launching Grace Kids as an after-school program where kids are going to be able to not just watch a conversation, but to be part of a conversation. The same reason that we want you in a dinner group is why we want kids to be part of this program because they need that leader who's investing in them. They need that leader who's leading them in that conversation for them to be able to have that conversation with their friends as they're looking, okay, how do I follow Jesus? How do I trust Jesus? So this fall, Grace Kids is becoming an after-school program so that even if you're watching online, your kids can be part of that community. It's really their dinner group experience. In, In addition to that, we're looking at, okay, how do we creatively create spaces for us to be able to gather. And as we move into the fall, we're going to continue to invest in our online gathering experience. So no matter where you are in the world, that you're going to be able to gather with others who are on this journey with you and engage, whether it's in the chat or or whether it's through online groups, whatever it may be, to be able to engage in that way. We want for you to be able to connect all over the world. In addition to that, we've also begun to experiment with in-person services. Now, some of you have heard about this, and I told you at the beginning of last month that we were, as we moved through the month of August, that we were going to try some things, and we have done just that. As we've moved through the past month, we've had two indoor services, and listen to this, we've had two outdoor services. As a matter of fact, our second outdoor service is taking place today. And we've been, we've been experimenting and just saying, okay, what does this look like? And, and we've brought our leaders together to help us do that and to try different things and figure out, okay, how do we do this as, as safely as possible? How do we do this as effectively as possible? How do we create a space that's not just a great space for us to gather, but where you can invite your friends to be a part of it and they're going to feel loved, cared for, engaged, and safe inside of that environment? I, I want to show you, I want to show you what those what those services look like. So as you look at the fall, you can begin to look at, okay, how do I, how do I engage? How do I engage maybe in one of these two ways? First, I want to show you our indoor service, which actually took place where we typically meet at 301 Garden Street here in Hoboken. But the space obviously has to be very different. The experience is different, but I think it's powerful. Check this out. All right, well today is our very first in-person service here at Hoboken Grace. And we want to give you an idea of what this looks like as we begin to look at, okay, how can we begin to meet again? As you can see, uh, everyone's going to be wearing a mask just as required for indoor gatherings, which means my glasses are probably going to be fogged up for most of this walkthrough. But I want to give you a picture of what to expect and some of the, some of the safety measures and precautions that we've taken. So as you come in, you'll see that our greeters are here to greet you, but to do so in a way that allows us to be able to maintain social distance. And then as you come up, you'll be able to check in right here at our check-in table. They'll take your name and they're going to give you your table number. Each quarantine group or family is going to have a table. And, And as you register, you'll be able to choose how many are at your table and to be able to reserve a table in that way. We're also taking temperatures at this location. And then as we come in, you see that we've got our greeters ready here. 
to be able to greet you and then hand sanitizer again available right here for you to be able to make sure that everything is safe and clean. Repackaged coffees and waters for you as you make your way in. It's a little different, our hospitality table set up than what it used to be, but this allows us to be able to be safe. And then, as you come in, you'll see the different tables set up around the room for people to be able to be part of the worship service. It's incredible what the team has done with that space, isn't it? And I have to tell you, when we had that first service, I was bawling. I was bawling. It's so powerful. But we know that for some of you, you, you don't feel comfortable being, being in an indoor setting. Or maybe your friends won't feel comfortable being in an indoor setting, which is even more important. And so we, as we looked at, okay, how do we lean in? We decided to do something a little a little crazy. We actually secured a parking lot, just an abandoned, empty parking lot on the north end of Hoboken, and our team has transformed that space for us to be able to launch our outdoor services. Again, I want for you to be able to see it, because I think it's hard for people to be able to imagine, okay, what does this look like? So check this out. Hoboken Grace, we are here at our outdoor location uptown at the end of our very first outdoor service. I'm telling you, it was incredible. We had the space set up where we can responsibly meet together, being able to distance underneath the different umbrellas. It's, it's incredible what our team has done. And as we, as we look at our plan for the fall, we want for you to be able to see what just happened right here and what we're talking about when we talk about our outdoor services for this fall. So check it out. As you arrive, our team is gonna be ready to check you in and they'll actually give you your umbrella assignment. Each family or quarantine group has their own umbrella to be able to make sure that we're as responsible as possible. We've got waters waiting for you as you arrive, so grab one of those. And then at your umbrella, we have communion that is set aside specifically for you so that we can celebrate in this way. We have our stage set up here in the middle. Our band is able to lead us in celebrating the one who loves us most. And then as we move through the day, our app is able to guide you through the day as we look at both the songs that we're singing and also the conversation that we're walking through. It truly is an amazing space and we can't wait to step into this fall and be able to use it for us to be able to come together like we never have before as a family. How amazing is that? It's incredible. That space is going to allow us to do so many things as we move through the fall, whether it's connection events, whether it's dinner groups, being able to meet there in outdoor space. Our Grace Kids program is going to be taking place there so that it's, it's a safe place for kids to be able to engage the truth of who Jesus is. There's so much potential as we look towards the future because we want to lean in. And as we move into the fall, next week, next week, we're taking this to a different level. So far, we've had, as I said, two indoor services, two outdoor services, just one service on each Sunday as we've moved through the last month. But next week, we move to both, both locations at the same time. So we will have all three locations, our online location, our indoor 301 location, and then also the lawn, the outdoor location. All three will be functioning at the same time. At first, there will just be one service in each of those in-person locations. But then as we get to the 20th, we're taking it to two services at both of those locations. Because we want to be able to engage your friends with the truth of who Jesus is. And so I want, I want to invite you, as we look towards the fall, I want to invite you to lean in. And to realize that we have so many opportunities right now to share Jesus in, in creative and engaging ways. But then also to recognize that what we do, what we're able to do as a church is dependent on the church. In other words, it's dependent on you, not an organization. It's dependent on us. And we can only do as a church what we collectively as a church decide to do together. 
And if we're going to lean into this, then we need you to lean into this moment. And so today I'm asking you, I'm asking you to do three things. The first one is this. As we look towards the fall and what we believe God's calling us into, the first thing that I want to encourage you to do is to re-engage. This is for those of you who maybe were part of a team in the past or maybe part of a group in the past or maybe your group has shut down for a little bit and you're going to restart in the fall. As we walk into the fall, re-engage. Figure out, okay, how can I begin to serve? Reach out to that leader, that, that leader that you are part of their team. Reach out to them today and say, I'm in. I'm leaning in. I want to re-engage. So first, re-engage. Second, serve. For some of you, you can't re-engage because you haven't served in the past. Today, we have Team Link. It's going to be taking place both online and in person. One of the Team Links is going to be taking place at our outdoor location. For some of you, like, man, I want to see that. Team Link is the best way for you to be able to see that. And you're going to be able to come today and explore all the different teams that are available. Online, you're going to be able to meet all the different directors and hear about the teams that are available. And here's the thing. It doesn't matter where you are in the world. You can serve. You can be part of what we're doing here as part of our communications team, our analytics teams. There's so many opportunities for you to be able to lean in, even if you're not here in our local area. And so I want to encourage you to serve. Or maybe for you, the way that you serve is you're going to start one of those groups all over the world. I know that we have groups already. They're going to be starting in Chicago. and There's, there's places all over the country where we're beginning to raise up groups of people who are saying, no, I want to help people find their way back to God inside of my community. I want to experience what that early church experienced. I want to take that message to those that God has sent me to. I want to to experience God working that way. Re-engage, serve, and invite. Number three, invite. As we look at the different opportunities that are available, whether it's our online campus or outdoor campus or indoor campus, invite your friends to be part of this with you. Don't just reserve a table at our indoor location just for you and your family. Are, are, there, are there others that you're quarantining with that don't know Jesus? Invite them to be a part of it with you. As you reserve that umbrella outdoors, invite them to be a part of that with you. As you're engaging online, invite them to be a part of that with you you. We know that we've experienced that love and grace. We know, we know that we've been given the greatest message the world has ever heard. We know that we've been sent to take it to the world. We are not, we are not of those who shrink back. We are, we are the ones who lean in. May we, as we move through this fall, may we experience how God works in the midst of the storm. May we experience what that early church experienced, the reality that even if hell itself comes against it, the church will not be overcome. It doesn't matter how big the storm is. God can do, and God has done and will do unbelievable things in the midst of the storm. May we experience that. And as a result, may those around us, well, may they, may they know that love and grace as well. Will you pray with me? Father, I'm so incredibly grateful for how you move in every situation. Not just that we don't have to be afraid of the storm, but that we, we can move through it. Not asking why, but asking how. Father, I pray that as we lean into this moment with you, that you would use us, that you would use us to share the truth of who you are, the truth of how you work with the world around us. In Jesus' name, amen.